Have you ever seen short videos of thousands of ducks marching on a road or crossing a street? Ever wondered why this place has so many ducks and where they were going? Well, it all has to do with rice. For those of you who don't know how rice is grown, they are grown in fields that are waterlogged, waterlogged defined by being dictionary means saturated with or filled with water. The waterlogged part is important, and you'll see in a second. As a kid, I would grow up hearing stories of fish and rice fields, and upon further research, I found out that rice fields have a pretty awesome ecosystem. You know how I said the waterlog part was important? It turns out that because rice is grown in flooded areas, it functions as an artificial floodlands, housing all sorts of wildlife, ranging from birds to insects. The rice provides shelter for the fish, and a home for bugs that can be consumed by the fish. The birds can also eat fish insects, or nibble on the rice. Because this is a pretty balanced ecosystem, it's filled with relationships between plants, animals, insects, and even humans. For example, fish can eat the pests off the rice, as well as provide fertilizer through its waste. The rice provides shelter, as well as shade for the fish. The fish can also eat weeds for, the, for food, and reduce the competition for the rice, as well as compete against other fish. For food. After learning about this amazing ecosystem, I wondered what happened when the rice disappeared, specifically to the fish, since the water is drained during harvest season. In some farms, they flop around until they die and can be sold or eaten, which is pretty beneficial to rural families as it gives them extra food and income. However, some engineers have figured out ways to plant rice that also incorporates fish. By digging trenches on the side of the fields, when the water is low, the fish have a deeper part in the field to stay in. This way, the ecosystem isn't affected by a lot of things. After the harvest season, the farmer brings in an army of ducks. This is not for fun, as these ducks eat pests left over from the dead rice and step on the dead rice plants to help farmers with plowing for the next season. The ducks also eat dead weeds, and their droppings become fertilizer. That's why there are a lot of videos of ducks marching down roads. Upon finding the answer to what happens when the rice is removed, I began to wonder if even having an ecosystem in the rice is good. It turns out that there are pros and cons to this. I'll start with the pros. The fish offer good fertilizer, gets rid of some of the pests, and eats the weeds. Cons. Sometimes the fish would uproot the rice plants, which isn't good. It's less efficient if you are digging trenches for the fish, which means less land, and that also means less rice. If you stick in your hands into the water, you might get bit by a fish. Overall, it's not bad considering if you don't care about large yields. You can also plant rice with less pesticides and fertilizer. However, I researched in some articles and found out that farmers use more fertilizer with fish than without, because more fertilizer equals more plankton growth, which means more food for the fish. Also, now that I look at my paper as I'm typing out the script, I notice that I asked a question about using rice paddy fields for more than one purpose, like fish farming. Well, pass me. Yes. Yes, it can. In fact, farming fish in rice fields have been done in ancient times, so I don't know why past me asked such a silly question, but whatever. Anyways, this is the end of the project, and I hope you enjoyed this horrible video.